morning. Welcome on this uh, cold and windy morning. Thanks for joining me in another episode. Back on the tube, fly fishing. And as you can see, <laughs> we're into a nice fish to start of the day. A few casts into the morning. It's only after sunrise. And it's an absolutely amazing start <laughs> to a day. So uh, let's try to land this fish. Hopefully we'll be in for, an, for a good day. Oh, that's a nice fish, that's a nice fish. That's what we came in here for. And uh, I might show you the gear I'm using. As you can see, I now have um, this camera on. So uh, I've, uh, I've mounted it on the Ray Blazer Ray Blaza, a, a, a pole attachment. For now, let's enjoy the fight and have a good day. <laughs> Oh, 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 no, 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 no. Don't go into a reed. It's not a good idea. Don't go into a reed. She hit exactly where I was expecting her to. Just on the edge of a, of a shallow water reed falling into deep water. She was patrolling the edge there. That's a great start. Oh. They fight so well on this like you. <laughs> Look at this bend in this road. Now, is she ready? Can we land her now? Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's what we live for. It really is. It's a very good fish. <sighs> There we go. Brim pattern bronze fly just in the corner of the mouth. There it is. <laughs> How's that for a start? Are the early mornings not worth it? The cold and windy ones especially? Ah, fantastic. Uh, this pole here is a meter long and that fish is 101 <laughs> oh. 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 I wanted to do a bit gentle release <laughs> but she wasn't waiting for it So, that's what we're doing today. We'll try to change a fly after each fish today. Just not to stick to the one that caught me all the fish last time. Hopefully we get a few hits and a few fish and we'll be changing fly after every piece of action. And we'll see what happens. Oh. Ah, ha, ha, came off. I need to admit to something. After maybe 45 minutes of fruitless casting of another fly, I put this uh, bronze and gold brim pattern bag on. And uh, just had a fish on it, which felt like a quite a decent fish, but it came off after a few seconds. So we'll keep going. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was a really strong hit. Really strong hit, this one. I don't think it's a bad fish, but that hit was really good. Whoa. Ah. <laughs> I don't like this little one. They scared the shit out of me. They can bite you and stick a hook in you and do everything to you. That's in the corner of the mount. Small jack, but they all count. And that fish had three times as strong as the big one. Up. 
See you later. <laughs> Just a second cast. <laughs> Another one, probably sister or brother, because it hit as hard as the other fish. Oh. Another scary monster. The large ones I can deal with, but these little crazy guys, they scare the shit out of me. Don't do anything silly. There you go. Two cats, two twins. Uh, hop. I don't like the way this, this has kinked, so um, I'll fix it at home, but I'll change it for now because I think that would affect the uh, the work of the fly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a fish. Nice. <laughs> yeah, average size. Nice, nice fish. That's number four today. Yep! Ah. <laughs> Lovely! Come on! We'll let you go quick! Oh! oh, 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 oh. And she jumped into the, into the floating donuts. Very eager to meet you guys. The camera... Oh, the camera is okay. Come on! Oh, oh. Oh. Uh, uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Uh, going mad in between my legs. Here goes. Uh, uh, now that's better. In the corner again. In the same corner. Uh, uh, I might take a. I take a pliers for this one, just in case. She is a bit mad and she's now. She is a bit mad and now she closed her mouth. She's already unhooked, but I just need to get her to open that mouth. There you go. There you go. About. Maybe, maybe seven pounds. Lovely fish. Yep. <laughs> she wasn't waiting. She wasn't waiting for any goodbyes. I was trying a few other flies, but I keep coming back to this one because I have all the confidence and confidence is what makes your fishing better or worse. And um, I'm sure they will, will hit the other flies as well, but just the confidence in this fly. Funny though, I'm playing a mental game here in my mind because the way it goes for me in fishing is when I catch a fish or when I'm onto a few fish and I know they're feeding and they are around, the first thing I do after catching it, I want to change fly and I want to change lure and I want to try a different, <laughs> different setup. I don't know, instead of keep casting and keep catching on the one that I know is scoring well, I, in my mind right away the first reaction is I want to try other lures or flies. Five, ten minutes later, the, the lack of confidence kicks in and I change back to this guy. But then after we fish, the first thing I do is keep thinking about changing the fly. So am I mad here or is that what others do as well? Tell me, tell me what you do down there in the comment section. And now we'll uh, try to catch another one. <laughs> that was a huge mark on the sounder. Just underneath myself. Seen it on a clear view and side view and down view. Big mark. Yeah, 
Yeah. Ah, uh, no. No. That could have been the big fish. It's fishing, I guess. That could have been the big fish. Just taken where the mark was. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Maybe it didn't hug itself. Maybe it just grabbed the fly, got tangled a little bit in, in their teeth and let it go. So uh, I'm just trying to convince myself here. I'm still in a chance for her to hit him again. <laughs> I'll do something no fly angler would be proud of now. <laughs> but you know what? I'm an all round angler, not a fly angler. So I, I'm allowed to do so. So what I'm thinking is that um, that fish have seen the fly and it's taken the fly. And I run the fly a few times more through the same area and she didn't hit it. So we'll try to completely change the presentation and we'll change to a big lure Mura's mouse in a similar color and uh, see if that triggers the reaction. With a fish on. Ah, it's heavy enough. This rod has a way too long boot section for a float tube. Ah, yeah, yeah, no, it's not a bad fish. Towing me around. Now this. That clutch was very tight and she was oh, 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 pulling some line. And the camera is straight. Oh, that's a nice fish. I loosened the clutch a little bit. Oh, that's a nice fish. <laughs> I'm not sure if it's the same fish. Not something not right with her mouth. But it is still a cracking pike. I think I'll put her in the landing net because the hooks are just just where I would be chilling the fish. Oh, lovely. Do you see the lump there? It's called lymphoma and it's a tumor caused by an infectious virus. But you should get rid of that by the time the water gets warmer in the late spring. There's the hook. That's why I didn't want to chin this fish. This hook is very close to where, where I'm keeping my fingers. Looking at the pole, that's about 104 centimeters. She might not be 20, but she's a beautiful fish. How about that? Ah, what a cracker. What an absolute cracker. Look at this fish. Look at this fish. in between the legs huh how's that for a release <laughs> by the way if you were ever looking for a decent landing net well depending what you need it for but i use it for salmon this year it falls down just like so and then i can carry it on my back or else uh, it, uh, it it can be a pike net it's about a meter deep so you've seen that that fish was 104 centimeters and it went into the landing net first try. 
it also is a carbon finish and some foam here so it's a floating net here it is floating there I better grab it before it flows away I just find it a genuinely good net it's light it falls and it's floating the handle doesn't expand because um, it's actually a float tube landing net made by Ropala it's called carbon float tube net so there's no need for the handle to extend but a very very good net if you ever were looking I, I was looking for one like that for uh, quite some time and I'm very pleased with this so uh, just so you know That was a nice change with the lure. Mura's mouse doing the business. So uh, I'll give it a few more casts and we'll see if there is another one. Oh, I think I just had a follow there. Well, not sure if you've seen it. There was a wave turning just after the mouse. And she went that way. So I'll try to... Oh. Wait, stop. I'll try to cast it there. Did you see that line wrapping around the front treble? It's fairly annoying. Happens every couple of casts. Do you guys have any way to deal with that? If you do, do let me know, please, because it's driving me nuts. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Almost got a heart attack there. <laughs> I hope you've seen this fish going hard after this mouse. <laughs> oh. It is a nice area here. I, I'm standing on the top of uh, two meters and maybe five meters out there is uh, five meters deep. So there is a steep ledge there. And as the Mura's mouse was going just over the ledge, the fish hit it. So. Like any fishing, the margins are always one of the best features to fish. Always. Pike patrol them at the bottom of the slope and they, they hide there to, just near the slope and just pick any fish that's coming over the, uh, over the ice. So that's what happened to this mouse. Oh, big shape just underneath of me. Big shape. Let me see if I can annoy this fish to take the lure. The fish is midway now. She was on the bottom. She's half depth now. She might be looking at my lure. I can't see her anymore. I'll give it a cast just over where she was. Oh, that was a big fish. But she hit where I seen her on the founder. She was just on the top of that shelf. Didn't hook herself. Oh, that, was a, that was a decent fish. I thought I've seen a swirl. And after, maybe two, three seconds later after the swirl, I didn't say anything, but I, I've seen a swirl. And then after the swirl, the fish hit the lure. Maybe that's why the two fish didn't hook. Okay, so the plan is... I'm hungry. <laughs> They're hungry, I'm hungry. But the plan is, I'll, uh, I'll have a sandwich now, I'll have some coffee. I'll rest this area maybe for, for 15 minutes or so and um, there's a few fish here i've seen a few on the founder i have two and um, I, i've landed that big fish and then i hooked or lost uh, two more fish so uh, i know they are in the area at the moment i'll rest it for 15 20 minutes i'll have some food in the meantime and then i'll come back at them with a fly rod 
before I come back, I'll just show you my uh, setup quickly. That's the uh, Savage Gear Hire Rider uh, 170. And like, if you're interested in buying one, you know exactly what it looks like. So I'm not gonna be showing it to you. The thing I will show is that that's where I have my um, um, fish finder. And the, 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 the yellow box contains a battery. So it's attached to a battery. I put it into a bag and then just attach it with those two uh, red bungee straps. The uh, the transducer is is there under underneath that tube, and I just have it attached with this strap. That's the net you've seen. There is a um, Westin W4 um, rod, pike rod, heavy pike rod with my lure and a pen slammer three. As you've noticed, I have another camera here. So the camera is uh, attached with this uh, Rail Blazer rip port and that's a Rail, Rail Blazer 600 pole. And that's my uh, GoPro there. And it, the cable, the USB cable goes to that uh, box there. Inside the box, I have a battery. As for my fly setup, that's a Sierra Salis nine feet number nine rod and a guideline Favo 79 um, reel. The line I have here is Airflow Sniper 40 Plus a pike or streamer line. Uh, it goes into a four feet of a very aggressive pike leader, which is turning the fly much better than my um, fluorocarbon I was using initially was. And that goes into about 50, maybe 55 centimeters of a not too kinky titanium wire, which kinks very, very little. And at the uh, business end, I have the uh, pretty much destroyed uh, brim pattern fly, fly from a uh, Pike Terror Flies. Tomasz, thank you very much. The flies are doing the business. I'll be back for more very soon. Okay, so we're back at it. It's been about 25 minutes. The place got a little bit of a rest and the sun came, came from behind the clouds, so it's very nice now. So what we'll do is um, I'll just position myself on the top of the shelf now in two meters of water and I will be casting towards five meters uh, and bringing the fly back up the slope. Hopefully some uh, patrolling pike we've seen before will intercept that fly. If not, I will start gradually moving down the slope towards uh, deeper water and covering a bit more water, fishing slow and a bit deeper and um, see if we can get one on the fly now. Yeah, I'm, I'm seeing one mark just right from me. Pretty much where I'm working my fly at, at the moment. Whoa! Ooh. Oh. Okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So what's bad about it is that I, I didn't stroke properly and I didn't hook the fish. What's good about it though is that I'm sitting exactly on two meters now and the fish has taken exactly where I thought she should take. So on a steep slope, as I was working my way, my fly up the slope exactly where I am, where I thought it would happen. Oh, that's a long day on the water. So while I'm floating here and enjoying the sun going down, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe and hit that bell notification button if you haven't yet. It helps me grow the channel and helps the videos too. And if you did enjoy this one, check this top video on the right hand side where I caught my biggest pike ever. Or check my latest video, which I'm really proud of, where I managed to get the very first salmon on the fly and I explain how to go about getting your first salmon. So until the next one, take care guys.